I'm Mike Major. I came to Urbana in 1975 as Ohio's first artist in residence for the Ohio Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts, thinking I'd be here for one year. But my wife and I fell in love with the community, and we've been here now for uh, going on 45 years. So it's been a great place to live. Uh, I came here from New York, although I grew up on a farm in Ohio and uh, studied, did my master's work in New York at Pratt Institute. But uh, my early artwork was books of drawings. I would go from city to city and do books of drawings, starting with small towns, Athens, Ohio. I did a book on Champaign County and Urbana. And the book drawings led to starting a printing company, which eventually led to publishing the Warren Grimes book, A Light in the Sky. But I have become a sculptor uh, for the last 15, 20 years. I'm working in bronze, doing public monuments, and that is nearly my full-time work now, although I still love painting and drawing. The Warren Grimes book was written because we felt that we were going to lose the story if we didn't get it written before many of the employees, many of the friends of Warren Grimes were gone. And he was such an interesting character. He was a true Horatio Alger person because he lost his father when he was nine years old. His father was uh, drowned in the Mad River, which is a creek that flows just west of Urbana. He was coming back from a camping trip and uh, fell into the water and was not able to swim. So Warren, since the family was poor, uh, was sent to an orphanage uh, near Tiffin, Ohio. And the orphanage had around 1,200 people. It was an orphanage that was run by a Protestant organization, and it was called the Union Orphanage. It was half day of school, half day of work. So he was trained in mechanics, which he had a real uh, fascination for and a gift, very creative. And it was in the afternoons when all of the children were assigned to various tasks to help pay for the cost of the orphanage, whether it be working in the fields, which Warren didn't like. He wasn't very physically strong. He was pretty small, pretty much lacked muscles. But he loved um, tinkering with mechanics. He was taken out of class over and over again by some of the faculty to work on repairs because he was so good at it. He really uh, earned the nickname Inventor back then at such a young age. And he was happiest when he was working by himself hands-on. He didn't like the schooling part. He didn't enjoy that too much. Uh, but he believed in working and he was a hard worker. So he ran away from the orphanage at age 15 and he came back to Urbana, uh, eventually made a friend here. He made a living here shoveling coal, filling up tanks at the gas station, uh, just doing menial work and odd jobs. And then he made a friend here who uh, was a little older than he was. And this 18-year-old friend, and he decided that they would go back to his friend's home, which was Michigan. They heard that Henry Ford was offering good pay at the factory. Henry Ford had decided that he would pay his workers more. They were paid around $2.40 a day earlier, but around 1915, he decided that their quality of life was so bad that he needed to share profits. He decided, why not $5 a day? And of course, this caused riots. People, uh, they had, I think, 10,000 people at the gates of the Ford Motor Company one day and 15,000 the next. And when they were turned away, when they had enough employees, the people started throwing rocks at the factory building and breaking out windows. He was hired, but he was worried about passing the physical exam. So he, he got his friend to stand in for him, and who was in good physical shape. Warren was a little bit underweight and skinny. Muscles uh, were lacking, and, but he, he turned out to be an, a, a very, very uh, treasured employee at the Ford Motor Company. And he worked there for a number of years on the assembly line, uh, was well respected, but decided to join a couple of other fellows and start his own electric company in Michigan, in Detroit. And um, he worked at that for a few years and heard that there was a challenge to design aircraft lighting, a retractable 
kind of light for the experimental Ford Primotor. Up until then, aircraft had no lighting. Even the airfields were lit by bonfires. The fields were rather crude. Uh, lighting was just something that hadn't been put on planes at all until that time. The Ford Trimotor was to be an all-metal plane. He was successful. He won the bid to build this retractable light for the Ford uh, Trimotor. And so he came to Urbana to manufacture those and, and brought some friends in with him uh, one at a time. He, I think his first two hires were Don Prince and, uh, and another Don, and eventually he hired a few more. Up until 1940, he was just kind of finding it hard to meet payroll at his little company because aviation was not booming yet. There wasn't a, a whole lot of demand. Uh, the aircraft companies were building just one or two planes in a period of time that required only a few lights. So he wasn't interested in mechanizing uh, any of the production on the lights at first. But eventually there was a bill signed to really uh, build up the uh, air defense system for the United States. Roosevelt decided in about 19. 39 that uh, we really didn't have enough pilots and he wanted to train about 20,000 pilots and he wanted to build more aircraft so all of a sudden <clears throat> there was a real updraft for this company for aircraft lighting. Warren Grimes responded to that. He surrounded himself with a team. He always liked to have hands-on so often he would be found in the factory working with uh, building these lights. He came up with a a reflection device, in other words, a silver behind the bulb that increased the lumens. Uh, that was a novel idea, and he used that on wing lights as well as landing lights, and that really improved the effectiveness of the lighting that he was building. So with the expansion of defense spending, especially the beginning of the war, all of a sudden Grimes Manufacturing became a very substantial company earning the E uh, for excellence uh, in production. Warren had a talent for judging character, and I think one of the keys to the success of the Grimes company was that he knew who to hire, who would turn out to be a, an effective partner, or an effective uh, worker in the uh, company. And he, in fact, um, depended very strongly on teamwork. His skills were invention, mechanical repair, problem solving. He was a very creative man. But business areas, maybe he wasn't so good at. His mentor was Henry Ford in many respects. He admired the man for his ingenuity, for his brilliance in developing the assembly line system, and for his caring for his employees and the community. And Warren Grimes emulated that. He took care of Urbana. He he put money back into the community here. He um, made it uh, possible to have an airport here and a country club. And he sent his workers to Florida, Delray Beach, uh, had housing there for them, helped people out when he could uh, all of the time. And, and a lot of this was inspired by Henry Ford. But uh, in later years, uh, Warren Grimes lost interest and would prefer being off to himself. He moved to Florida, turned the company over to some trusted folks who uh, continued to grow the company. I think the highlights for Warren were, in fact, winning that tri-motor contract to produce lighting, uh, being inducted into the Aviation Hall of Fame. His family uh, was a real uh, important uh, part of his life, and certainly his community was an important part of his life. Another thing that he did for the community was to um, take over the old theater and turn it into a movie theater here. It was a performance theater, a stage, um, had a fire, burned the third story off. Uh, he made sure that it was put into shape and seats installed and a screen installed, projectors, and made a, a theater available to the community, which is alive and well today thanks to community members who have revived that theater. The real highlight now is the, the new aviation museum here that the Schiffer family made possible, the building of the B-17. And Warren never foresaw how much good, what ripple effect his, his um, investment in Urbana would cause, but it continues to compound today. 
the celebration this week uh, of the Memphis Bell uh, is a, a celebration of uh, keeping in mind how critical air uh, support was to our effort in World War II and, and, uh, and so many things. Um, and after the war, virtually every aircraft flying had Grimes lighting from the very earliest uh, transports, freighters like the Tor Trimotor, which was the earliest freight airplane, uh, which became also a transport for people once they fixed up the interior and, and uh, designated it certain numbers of the aircraft for that, all the way up to the 747, 767, I mean, all the new aircraft being designed today still includes a lot of the, what is now Honeywell lighting, but um, formerly the Grimes uh, lighting. So it, uh, it is a tremendous bit of history that he had a hand in because of his inventive genius and because of his um, industrial uh, sense of, uh, of hard work. So that, uh, that's the story of Warren Grimes.